Look at the guides on these two rods. The Daiwa Press on the left has exactly 5mm inner diameter. The Major Craft uh, Truser rod on the right has only 2.3mm guides. It's hard to appreciate on camera how small a 2.3mm guide really is, but uh, keep in mind that just because your guides look small it doesn't mean that they are micro. In my opinion, if the inner diameter is over 3mm, uh, the guides are just small and not micro. And uh, usually micro guides are not found in rods under 100 bucks. These guides are right in front of the camera now, but if I move them even a foot away, and you can see that the hole in the micro guides is just really ridiculously small. With the Daiwa Presso rod, I can cast half a gram jig with 3 and even 4 pound line with absolutely no problem. All I need is a little twitch of the wrist and I will love it exactly where I want it. With the Major Craft Truser rod, that's just not possible. You can try to do it using more force on the cast, but then you lose your accuracy and you're never gonna cast the same distance anyway. Even with 2.5 pound line, Half a gram jig is just a challenge for the Truser rod and I don't use this rod with less than uh, 1 gram jig heads. My first video of 2019 was the truth about circle hooks. It got a lot of traffic and a lot of thumbs down and a lot of comments and if you're curious about it I will leave a link in the description. And my first video this year will be another controversial one because as you can already tell my opinion of micro guides is not very high. And uh, everything I read or hear about these guides is praising and glorifying and some of the claims about these guides are just absurd and physically impossible. The truth is that micro guides have both strong advantages and strong disadvantages compared to conventional guides. And whether they are better or worse than conventional guides depends entirely on the specific application. I'm gonna start with the advantages of micro guides first, just to assure folks that I am aware of uh, every advantage that micro guides have and I'm not looking at only one side of the coin. The most obvious advantage is weight, as it is immediately obvious that micro guides are significantly lighter. Reducing the weight of the rod by a few grams may not seem much, but remember that the importance of weight increases the further you go from the real seed. A couple of grams from the very tip of the rod can be the difference between a good feeling rod and amazing feeling rod. When I reviewed my Major Craft Truza rod, I was talking about a magic feeling in the hand. Well that's because the guides are not only tiny, but on top of that they're made of titanium and torsite, so it's like having no weight at all at the tip of the rod. If you put the big guides of Daiwa Presso on the Major Craft rod, the magic feeling will be gone. And vice versa, if you replace these big guides on the Daiwa Presso rod with these things uh, from the Major Craft rod that weigh almost nothing, all of a sudden the Daiwa Presso rod will feel like a rod that is 3-4 times more expensive. That magic feel is exactly why rod manufacturers love and promote micro guides so much. Because if you think about it, some features of the rod, like sensitivity for example, you can only feel on the water, fishing. And it's very difficult to pay high prices for a rod in the store when you don't feel nothing special in the hand. But that magic feel, you can feel right there in the store. And when you do, they got you. You're gonna be amazed and you're gonna buy the rod. Another reason manufacturers like uh, micro guides is cost. The guides on this uh, major craft rod, like I mentioned, are made of titanium and torsite. Well, titanium and torsite are very expensive. If you make the guides super small, you use less titanium and less torsite. So the cost per guide would go down. Uh, do you know how much it would cost to make a full-size guide made entirely from titanium and torsite? Maybe $50 for just one guide? So obviously they cannot afford to build regular size guides from exotic materials like torsite and whatnot. The other advantage of micro guides that is constantly mentioned is sensitivity. 
And there are two reasons why micro guides would be more sensitive than regular guides. Weight and flex. Micro guides, like we said, are lighter and just because they are lighter, you would be able to easier feel a bite. And you know, this just comes from the laws of physics. Uh, just to extrapolate this, imagine that you are holding a five pound rod. Uh, that's unrealistic, but just imagine you're holding a five pound rod. There, there is no way you would feel the bite of a crappie. So the lighter the guide and the lighter the rod, the more, the easier it is to feel the nibble of a crappie. The other reason is the flex, okay? Uh, flex absorbs vibration and the feeling of vibration is, is, is sensitivity. And if everything else is the same, a bigger guide will flex mo uh, more than a smaller guide. That's why smaller guides would flex less and you would, you know, have better sensitivity. But uh, again, how much does stainless steel flex from the bite of a crappie? Very little, right? And how much weight do you save from, you know, going micro guides versus regular guides? Maybe a few grams. I know it. you, you feel the rod much lighter, but the, the practical weight savings are only a few grams. For these two reasons, I think the advantage is insensitivity is not, the practical advantage is not that great. Don't confuse different issues, okay? You can say uh, micro guides are more sensitive because they are made of torsite and regular guides are made of stainless steel. But that means that the properties of torsite are better for sensitivity than the properties of stainless steel. It has nothing to do with micro versus regular. When you compare micro and regular guides, we should assume that they are made of the same materials. I have seen some other claims for advantages of the micro guides, but none of them uh, have any merit in my opinion. For example, a couple of websites say that micro guides load the blank better because you have more guides. But that's just silly. This is just bad writing because in the first half of the sentence, you give credit to micro guides for loading the blank better. And in the second half of the same sentence, you say that that's because you have more guides. Well, which is it? Is the blank loading better because of micro guides or because you have more guides? I would agree that more guides would load the blank better. But if you have the same number of guides, micro guides don't have any advantage. Not only that, but in my observation and most of my research is on spinning rods, spinning, spinning rods with micro guides don't have more guides. Not only that, but you can find some spinning rods with micro guides that have one guide less than normal. So that's just completely silly. And I don't want to go through all the other claims, but I don't know any other claim for micro guides that has any merit. Okay, enough about advantages. Let's start talking about disadvantages now because it's certainly not all roses in there. The biggest problem with micro guides is that they are absolutely horrible for casting. I know that some companies have made the claim that micro guides actually improve your casting distance, but this is complete bullshit. I don't know with what other words to refer to that because this is completely turning physics upside down. And in my opinion, this is one of the most outrageous claims the fishing industry has, has ever made. I want to hurry up and say here that I'm talking mostly about spinning rods and reels. Because bait casting rods use bait casting reels 
and the line lay there is totally different. I'm going to address this later, but while in bait casting rods, micro guides still reduce the casting distance in theory, in practice, uh, they hurt casting distance very little. So the argument there is, is mostly theoretical, not so much practical. So back to spinning rods. The first thing I want to do is end this argument once and forever. If you're still on the fence on this issue, do this. Put some 10 pound monofilament line on a spinning reel and put it on a spinning rod with micro guides. Even better, try 14 or 17 pound mono and then try to cast. It ain't going nowhere. Now get the exact same spinning reel, remove it from the fancy rod with the micro guides and put it on a cheap ugly stick. It will cast 14 pound line all day with zero effort. This example is all you need to put an end to this absurdity once and forever. Because in this scenario it is immediately obvious that micro guides just cannot cast 10 and 14 pound line. And remember, everything else they tell you will be some kind of effort to distract you away from this scenario and then confuse you and take the conversation away in a different direction because as long as you insist on talking about 10 and 14 pound line, no defense of micro guides is possible. But I'm going to go through these objections anyway. For example, somebody might say, well, Victor, this major craft rod was never designed to cast 10 and 14 pound line. It was designed to cast a line from 1 to 4 pounds. So what you're saying doesn't prove anything. The rod was just not designed for that. Okay, then go find a different, you know, spinning rod with micro guides and try to cast 10 and 14 pound line. You will always fail. And if you notice, all of the rods that you will find uh, with micro guides, spinning rods with micro guides, will be rated for a very thin line. And the reason for that is precisely because micro guides cannot cast 10 and 14 pound line. Not that there is something different in the laws of physics when you go from 2 pound line to 10 pound line. Everything is exactly the same. When the line hits the micro guide, there is a lot of friction, a lot of energy loss, and that energy loss has to be subtracted from the kinetic energy of the flying lure. Everything is exactly the same, but just the numbers are a lot bigger with 10 pound line, and it's very obvious. Even to an amateur, even if you're a beginner angler, the moment you try to cast, you know, a 10 pound line with micro guides, it, it would be immediately obvious for everybody. The problem with spinning reels that doesn't exist in bait casting reels is that the line comes out in coils. And then these coils must travel through rings that are actually significantly smaller than the coils. This results in significant friction and that in turn results in significant energy loss. There are many factors that can reduce the energy loss. Smooth line has less energy loss. Soft line has less energy loss. Thin line has less energy loss. You can also make guides with very expensive inserts like Torzite that will also reduce the energy loss. But if you hold all of these factors equal and you only change the size of the guides and nothing else, small guides will always result in more energy loss. Okay, now uh, let's discuss this line slap that everyone is talking about because the proponents of micro guides pretty much put all of their eggs in that basket. So the argument goes like this, because regular guides are so big, they let big coils travel through the blank and then these big coils, because they're big, they're close to the blank and they reach the blank and accidentally they touch the blank. 
But think about the geometry of this contact, even if it happens, okay? I don't think it can happen on this particular rod, but I'll, I'll go to, to that later. But even if it happens, imagine you shoot a bullet almost parallel to a glass wall, and then the bullet just licks the wall and continues. How far do you think the bullet will travel? I think it will travel very far. It will lose very little energy from just licking the glass wall. Now imagine you shoot the bullet on a 45 degree angle and ricochets. How far do you think the second bullet will travel? Not very far. It will lose a lot of energy uh, when it hits the wall because of the angle. And if you shoot it perpendicular, it will lose 100% of its energy. So this is what's happening here. This is why the angle is so important. The direction in which the coils are traveling is almost parallel to the blank. And even if it does touch the blank, the deflection will be absolutely minimal and the energy loss will be completely negligible. Now compare this with the crushing deformation that a coil made of 10 pound line has to suffer to go through a 2.3 millimeter inner diameter micro guide. Just don't let them confuse you. You don't have to be engineer or physicist or scientist to understand this. How can these big coils that I just showed you go through these little guides uh, without heavy energy loss? Okay, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. This is just not possible. And these two things are not comparable. But let's not get hung on casting distance because that's not the only problem with micro guides. Think about connecting a 5 foot leader to your main line. Unless you really go down to 1 and 2 pound line, that's just not going to work with micro guides. And what if you live in the north and you want to use the rod in the winter? For example, I use the same rods for crappie fishing in the summer and perch fishing in the winter. You can't use micro guides in the winter. Any amount of ice will immediately completely clog the guides. But it doesn't have to be ice. It can be salt, it can be grass, it can be dirt, I don't know. Any kind of deposits on micro guides will immediately render them inoperable. Okay, so how do we end this video? What do we make of all of this? Are micro guides good or bad? Remember that in the beginning of the video I mentioned that you can't say whether micro guides are good or bad without specifying an application. That's because some applications let you keep all of the advantages and they minimize all of the disadvantages. For example, ultralight, you know, finesse fishing, this, this spinning rod right here. You know, I get to keep all of the advantages. I get the magic feeling, I get the sensitivity, and because the guides are so tiny, they can make them from exotic materials like torzite. On the other hand, because I use very thin and supple line, I use two pound line, two and a half pound line with this rod, casting distance is really not hurt. I also have other rods that I use in the winter. Yes, I can't use it in the winter, but I realized that and I bought it only to use it in the summer. So if you are clear with what the advantages are and what the disadvantages are, uh, if you're clear with that beforehand, then sure, go ahead and buy the rod and you will definitely enjoy it because there is no substitute for micro guides when it comes to what I call the magic feel, okay? On the other hand, see the thing is the promoters of micro guides already have blown, you know, out of proportion all of the advantages. It's the disadvantages that nobody is talking about. And this is hurting a lot of beginner anglers because these micro guides are not for beginner anglers. You, know, you have to know how to use thin line. You're not going to use this rod with thick line, okay? I don't care what anybody says. You're not going to use this rod in icy conditions or salt or grass or any kind of deposits. If you want to put, you know, 
five foot leader and you want to run and not through these guides, that's not going to happen unless you go to really, really thin line. So I hope this video just helps people understand that there are two sides to this uh, coin of, of micro guides and don't do a, an expensive uh, mistake because most of these rods cost two and three hundred dollars and I just you know, hate to see manufacturers just promote one side of the story. And that's it. That's all I have for this video. I hope, you know, it will help somebody. Let the comments rip. I'm waiting for them. Thank you for watching. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.